you think severe weather forecasting on Earth is tough, imagine trying to forecast severe weather in space. The folks at NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center, they've been doing that this week. This week, actually, a large sunspot, it came into view for, from Earth, and it's become a massive deal, and not just because of its size. Over the past 24 hours, two sunspots have merged, identified now as sunspot 3664. It's 16 times the diameter of Earth. Later today, if the skies are clear and you still have those eclipse glasses, put them on and look at the sun. You'll be able to see this sunspot. You don't even need a special telescope or lens. The sunspot is that big. But sunspot 3664 or 3664 is also where a ton of solar energy has built up. In fact, multiple eruptions have occurred recently and these solar flares they're Earth directed. So for the first time in nearly 20 years, we mentioned it before the break, NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center has issued a rare G4 storm watch. Charged material from the sun will affect the Earth today, leading to the possibility of auroras as far south as Alabama tonight. You heard me right. Alabama. Alabama. Wow. Who can wants I, to tackle the G4 can, storm watch? Can I just say, though, off of the <laughs> Alabama thing, so the National Weather Service out of Norman has been so busy yeah. with severe weather this week. And then I was looking to see some of the updates from the severe activity that they've had, and they actually tweeted, X'd, I don't know what you say yeah. anymore, <laughs> uh, about the aurora forecast saying, Did they? we could see it as far south as Oklahoma as well. You know what, give it to Oklahoma, please. Give it to everybody who's had severe weather yeah. because it is a spectacle that very few people can actually enjoy in the United States. Set expectations, mm -hmm. you need mm -hmm. clear skies, Correct. and in Oklahoma, you'll have to look into the horizon, but I'm telling you, and you had mentioned it too, Marissa, that the the picture often looks a lot better than the actual view of it with your, with your eyes. Right, like when you snap a photo. Yeah, but I think, Kendall, this is the first legitimate chance that a lot of people in the U.S. could see these auroras. Right. I mean, it, we're heading toward a more active period of the mm -hmm. sun. It right. peaks next year at solar cycle 25. Mm -hmm. This is to be expected. Mm -hmm. The type of flare that we saw and the type of geomagnetic storm that Earth might experience, a G4, mm -hmm. this happens about 60 times mm -hmm. every cycle. And it's not a lot. No. 60 times every 11 years. Right. You don't see yeah. that all that often. but Yeah, you really don't. And so when we're looking at the scale, so again, this is the first time this has occurred. This has been issued since 2005, so it's been a while. But notice what the kind of effects could be. Well, we could be dealing with potentially some disruptions for radio communication, so blackouts. Um, we could also be dealing with some issues when it comes to potentially satellites, uh, GPS, what have you, could also be impacted. And when you're thinking about the time frame that this will be occurring, again, late tonight into early tomorrow morning, yes, again, there's some areas that will be able to see it, but a lot of of our big cities, unfortunately, you won't be able to see it just because yeah. of light pollution. But still, it's going to be incredibly far south. I know you've had a chance to see the Northern Lights, Stephen, and you were in Missouri. I was, and I, I wish I remember the exact year. I don't. I, I, it was it was last solar cycle mm -hmm. when it was nearing a maximum. Early 2000s. Yeah, faint greens. I, yeah. I saw nothing like this video, but it was mm -hmm. still. Um, a spectacular sight to, to behold. And the chances yeah. that, that we could see this at least for the next year or so going up, it's possible that we see yeah. even more activity yeah. and even more extreme geomagnetic storms too. You know, and, and you're talking about the cycle. I think the cycle just kicked off about four or five years ago, right? So yeah. we're freshly somewhat into it. Mm -hmm. But I thought it was interesting because when we did have a G5 or that extreme geomagnetic um, storm was in 2003, as Kendall mentioned, but it caused power outages in Sweden and damaged transformers in South Africa. Wow. When you talk about the influence of the sun and how uh, these particles are able to interact with our atmosphere wow. and our magnetic field, uh, the colors it's able to create, what do we say? The green is from the interaction with oxygen, mm -hmm. the green and the red, and then the blues with nitrogen. Isn't that fascinating? Okay, you know, blue and pink from nitrogen molecules. And, and even knowing that that can happen. Now, if yeah. you're in the higher latitudes, those, those opportunities of seeing them will be better. Mm -hmm. A lot of talk has been, notably with this sunspot, the, the Richard Carrington event. It, it was known as just the Carrington event. Mm -hmm. And if you're a space weather enthusiast or lover, you know about this. Richard mm -hmm. Carrington, he was well known in England for measuring sunspots. And back in 1859, he measured and drew one, and he, he was so excited, went to tell friends, came back to observe it, and it had looked different. Well, in the days that followed, there was this significant geomagnetic storm across the planet. 
Apparently, auroras were seen across the globe. These things can get extreme, and some people have said that sunspot looks a lot like the Carrington event. It's not the yeah. same. It's not it's as active. Close together. There are there are similarities to it, yeah. and really, it's it's more about the size of it that right. that really has raised some eyebrows because yeah. you've had two sunspots that have merged into this one, mm -hmm. three six six four. I was about to mention that cluster, right? Yeah, yeah, and so with that merger, and you can see it right here. This is. Mm -hmm. Obviously, an ability that that NASA geophysicists have, uh, heliophysicists have to to see this and to to get the opportunity and multiple. You see that multiple mm -hmm. flares. This is the year for heliophysics. Can Isn't I just it? say, mm -hmm. if you have any kids that are watching and into space and that sort of thing, we're coming off of the eclipse. They were really hoping to get some really good data yeah. uh, in studying the sun and and whatnot. And now you have this event. Mm -hmm. It's pretty exciting. It's that's I think that that's why they're calling it the uh, the big year mm -hmm. for heliophysics yeah. because yeah. there's there's so much which kicked off that the the solar eclipse and, mm -hmm. and the two eclipses that we have, but also uniquely about these flares and we can wrap it up. I know we've talked about it a lot. <laughs> the the ones that have happened maybe about mm -hmm. five different flares, mm -hmm. CMEs. They have, in a way, combined because they move at different speeds, and it, it's kind of known as a cannibal CME, mm -hmm. and that's what's going to be affecting Earth. So we have and something it, to look for this it weekend. It projects towards Earth, yeah. and by the time it gets here, yeah. that's how they're able to forecast. But we were saying it is tricky to see who will exactly see be able yeah. to see it. And you may not be able to see it at the naked eye, even out of Norman, the right. National Weather Service there. They're saying use your camera, potentially, and point it towards the northern horizon. Yeah.